I wonder if you can talk about the, the way in which SNCC was really drawing on the, the expertise and experience of, of local people. And, and also, you know, how much of that approach was, was shaped by the philosophy of Ms. Baker? Basing it on local people was absolutely um, coming from Ms. Baker. I mean, because that's how she had organized all her years. It was always on, not the top rung. It wasn't, you know, the ministers. It wasn't the teachers. It was, although certainly they got pulled in sometimes. Her main thing was you need to talk to the people who had the least um, least voice in, in their own, um, in their own futures. You know, I mean, uh, it, it, it's kind of like the Miss, Miss Fannie Lou Hamer's, you know, uh, and, and Miss Hamer saying, um, you know, they tried to kill me, but it seemed like they've been trying to do that a little bit at a time ever since I can remember because she had nothing to lose. And also Miss Baker had always understood, um, that these are the folks that most need that kind of organizing. Um, and, and just to, to give you a, a story, and this is in, in Southwest Georgia, but Bernice Johnson Reagan, who many people know as Sweet Honey and the Rock founder and another MacArthur Genius Grant awardee, her um, uncle had a farm. This is in Southwest Georgia in Albany. And um, the, the, her uncle was driving a new truck with his sons, her cousins, driving it into town and they pass his white neighbor he gets into town and um, he's beaten really badly by the white neighbor because, says the white neighbor, you know, how dare you pass me and in a new truck. So it was random acts. It was anything you white people had to do to make sure black folks didn't get out of their place, as they always said, right? So it, it, it didn't even require that you vote or try to vote. It was everything that would keep you from gaining any equity of power. So um, yeah, the vote was really important to that. Um, but what Ms. Baker always taught us was, you listen to local people, you ask them what they think they most want to focus on. What is, you know, so, so people, you know, SNCC workers would just sit on a, on a porch, but you, you're tr these folks had to trust us because they are putting not just their lives and livelihoods in our hands, they are trusting us with the lives and livelihoods of the entire black community in that area because we're young, right? We're not at risk. I mean, we are, you know, somebody could kill us, but, but the bottom line is we, we don't have families to protect. And one of the things Ms. Baker always said is you are not the leaders in these communities. You are the organizers who are hopefully um, developing strong grassroots local leadership that will survive even your deaths. So that there's always somebody who can continue it. So given given those those dangers that you were risking your your lives, the local people had had so much at stake. How did you how did you manage manage fear? Um, the you know the, the 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 dangers that that were posed by the work that you were doing. Part of it, I think, is that I was young, you know, and so. Um, you don't always think that something's going to happen to you. And I, I will tell you one incident where I did under, totally understand this, but, um, but I think part of it is also that you are around amazing people. I mean, you know, folks talk about courageous um, local people. They were also brilliant, by the way. I mean, they were discussing tactics and strategies and all of that. But what I come into is a community of young people and older local people who have been doing this before I could remember, you know, I didn't even know about a movement and they were doing all of this. So, um, you know, at one point there are, I, I guess three, how many people, three people, three black Mississippians get assassinated in 1955, the year after Brown v. Board. And that's a crucial year because white supremacists in the South understand, oh, the Supreme Court is no longer in our pocket, basically. They are not gonna support us anymore. You know, I mean, for years, I mean, I mean, Supreme Court initially had slave owners, you know, on the, on the, on the court. But, um, but at that point, that's the first time the white South sees that the Supreme Court is not gonna support them, 1955. So of course you get Emma Till, you know, the 14 year old who was killed. George Smith, he gets killed outside the courthouse in Brookhaven, in Brookhaven, Mississippi. He has just taken people to register to vote. And um, 
he gets, you know, he gets shot. My white folks shot to death uh, right in front of the courthouse. 1955. It is an upswing of the regular kind of violence that was always there. Um, so I'm coming into people who even when all of this has happened, even when um, they know that, for example, somebody has been accused of doing something they didn't do, uh, they had to get them to Chicago to get them out of harm's way, some black person. Um, they knew about all the lynchings, they knew about, and yet all of these black folks in all of these communities in the South somehow never stopped, right? So you come into this and you get surrounded by this. Now, I will also say that it helped that, um, that we sang, you know, we sang freedom songs. So I remember coming out of jail um, and I, I think I'd been there for about five days and we come out and I go into this church, um, black church um, and in Atlanta and this church choir is singing, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. And it's, you know, in the harmony. And, you know, I mean, it's it's the black church, you know, so the, the voices are lifted and you come, you come in, you've been in jail all these times, you know, all these days and you come in and it's like, whoa, you know, I mean, it's like, nobody can touch us. You know, you felt that way if you were on a demonstration, you know, um, um, you, you felt like even if you were about to go to jail, you were surrounded by people who, felt as um, as strong about this as you did and, and had been doing it longer. So for me, it wasn't even, um, it wasn't even a choice. You know, I mean, once you realize the injustice, it's almost like you have no choice. Now, didn't mean that you weren't afraid because you stayed away from the people who were not afraid. They would get you killed, you know, cause they would do stupid stuff. <laughs> 